In this video we are going to talk about logs in Linux. And before we begin, I want to mention that the presentation and the code that you will see in this video can be downloaded from my GitHub page, which is linked in the description. And if the video is helpful for you, then it would also help me if you like it, share it, and if you want to see more, then consider subscribing. So let's talk about logs in Linux. Of course, logs are important. In Windows, you are probably used to the event viewer to view all your logs. In Linux, we have two main uh, mechanisms or two main ways to view logs. First, we are going to talk about the journal. So in Linux, all units that are managed by systemd, so for example, services, have their logs collected and managed by the journal through the journal service. So this is a service that reunites all the logs from a system D in a one place. Of course, this is perfect because we have a central place where we can see all the logs from system D. Now the journal service is the service that does all of this, but to actually interact with it and see the logs, you will use a tool called journal CTL. And one cool thing about uh, how it works is the fact that the, the logs are not stored in text format. They are stored in a binary format, which means that the output can be shown in different formats on the fly. And the second place where we can read uh, different logs is the var log directory. This is a directory where uh, the system and also a lot of applications place their log files. And as you can see uh, from uh, my print screen, we have uh, files, we have archives and we have directories with other log files inside them. Now I wrote here four of the main logs that I think are interesting uh, to you, which uh, you can check out. First is the D message log. And this contains a kernel ring buffer, which basically contains messages regarding devices. So when you plug in new devices or devices are initialized, you will see all of these messages in the message. The next log is off.log and this contains all user logins and authorization info. So when a user logs in or wants to do something, you should find that information here. The next log is the dpackage log. And this, uh, you should recognize the name from a previous video. This is the log for the dpackage command. So you will see here all the installs and uninstalls that you have performed. And the last log that I wrote uh, here is the btmp log which is very important security wise because it contains all the failed login attempts. So if someone tries to hack into your system, you should see that event in this file. Now let's go to the actual code and see how to work with the journal and the var log directory. So let's start first with the journal and I want to show you the, the service that uh, is doing all of the magic system dash journal D and you see that it is uh, active. So first I'm going to show you the journal CTL command without any parameters. This basically shows you the journal logs, all of them. And they are paginated so you can use space to go through each one but it shows you from the earliest to the newest. So you will scroll a lot <laughs> to get to something interesting. Maybe it's not that helpful for you. Let's press Q to quit. And let's use some uh, other parameters. A very cool one is minus F, which basically will uh, uh, follow the uh, log in a live session. So uh, if we press uh, journal CTL minus F, you see that now 
we are in a prompt and it is waiting for new events to show us on the screen. As new events appear, they will appear here on the screen. So you can follow the journal CTL as it is populated. And to escape this screen, if you are done, you can press Ctrl C and we are out. We can, for example, if we want to get the logs for a specific service, we can use a dash U as you see here and we can get only the events for SSH and I'm also using dash F to follow live. If someone were to connect to SSH at this moment, an event would appear at, on the screen. And uh, if you don't want to follow live, of course, it works also without dash F. And now you get all of the messages, all of the logs. You can also do a nice thing, which is to get the last number of entries. Uh, in this example, I will get the last three entries. So I am not bothered with a lot of old events. And you see now I got the last entries uh, from the journal CTL. I can also combine this with dash u, for example, or other parameters. You can also uh, do a cool thing and uh, filter by the user ID if you want to get only the logs that were generated by a specific user. You can use the user ID. In my case, uh, this ID belongs to the user 100 user. And you see that now I get only uh, events that are related to me. Now, another cool thing is that you can also get events uh, from a specific date to a specific date, as you see from the highlighted text. So we are getting them from 20th of April to 24th of April, for example, here. And these are all the logs in that uh, time frame. Or you can go even uh, simpler than this and just get the logs from 10 minutes ago. And here you are. These are the logs that were generated in the past 10 minutes. Now let's move on to the var log directory. First, let's do an ls and uh, see everything that it is, that is in this directory. And uh, yeah, this is similar to what we saw in my screenshot from the presentation. Now let's um, go deep in some of the examples. For example, I showed you the D message file, which contains messages related to devices. And we can read what is in this file, but we can also use the D message tool to uh, show us the current events. And this is better somewhat than using the file because it also colors um, some things. So it's easier maybe to read if you want to just go through the events in the message. You also have a, a couple of parameters that you can use. For example, minus T is to make the time more easy to read. So it transforms it into a normal time and date here. And you can also get only events that are, for example, errors and warnings. So we should skip the info, debug and other event types for, uh, in this uh, case. And you see that now we get only specific, uh, those specific types of events. And this, uh, I would say it's uh, useful when you are troubleshooting uh, different problems. Now, of course, since the message is actually a file, we cannot use the tool and just use cut, for example, to get the file contents. But in my opinion, it's yeah, it looks nicer with the D message tool if you can use it. Uh, of course, since this is a file, we can use Linux tools like tail and we can get the last 20 lines from this file to not be bothered by uh, all the older messages. And the tail can also be used with the dash F command, which means that you can uh, follow the file as it is being populated exactly like we did with the journal. 
and uh, of course cut tail and all the other uh, linux commands can be used for the other files in this directory the message is only for the d message log so it has its uh, separate tool since it's so important and this was uh, more or less all about logs in linux um, of course to learn logs you have to need to read them or you have to try and read them because just to open them and close them it's not that interesting so i guess when you will have a problem and need to read the logs that is when you will uh, really learn them if you enjoyed the video then like it and i will see you in the next one